Shakespeare's in Steinberg. You know what the f it is? Aries and Andy, you and the jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut coke. No political corrections. Always sleep. Being awoke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this sh Before you was on your mama. Mary Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot. Racism. Much love to my loyal bag holders, rollers, loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. Hello there. Uh, by the time you guys are hearing this, Andy and I are in, are in Omaha. Uh, We're both in Omaha. We're both in Omaha. <laughs> it's been decided. Um, if I said I wanted to go, you'd go. I don't know, man. It might not work out. But since I went, no, I don't think it's financially feasible. You no, I wouldn't have said that. That's why I was saying we would discuss it. Okay. But uh, however, uh, as we recorded this, we're still in St. Louis. And something that I did not bring up, that I meant to bring up, uh, that would, you probably should have heard last Wednesday was, I think Andy and I like this city, but the cuisine. Maybe oh, we're going to the wrong places, man. I think so. Uh, because the, one of the you know spots from my show... Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives about three years ago. <laughs> yeah, I took Andy to Highway 66. It was garbage. Uh, then someone suggested what they said was going to be. There. This place called Broadway Oyster Bar. And we went. And, and prior to us going, I'm looking in my, at the menu in my room, and I am debating hard. Like, one, I've never had a po' boy sandwich. I want to one day have a po' boy sandwich. And this place served like, you know, Nolan's type cuisine, uh, so many different alligator dishes. But I was like, man, I've never had a po' boy sandwich. I, I was like, do I want the jambalaya, the po' boy sandwich? Do I want this uh, garlic linguine with crawfish? Do I want the crawfish mac and cheese? I was really debating hard. And I said, well, I know I'm definitely going to do the peel and eat shrimp and then have me and Andy share a bucket of crawfish. I ended up getting the jambalaya. The sauce was watery and runny. They served it in what looked like a doggy dish. It's a, it's a pie tin. A pie, whatever. It, it just, it looked like something a dog would eat out of. So on top of that, it wasn't very appetizing visually. I've had enough shrimp, and I'm a shrimp lover, to know when something's off. The sh and I, so much so, I said, Andy, taste the shrimp. Is it me or is this shit rubbery? And it was rubbery, which means it was overcooked. And they didn't devein it. It was so overcooked. This place was garbage. We might have ordered the wrong stuff again. Everybody said we and, ordered and the wrong I, stuff. And I, and I, no, no, who's everybody? You well, were saying that. No, some other people said that we didn't order. Well, I said to that, if you're a great restaurant, it there's, no, be good. there's no such thing as the wrong stuff. Well, it shouldn't have been. The shrimp should not be overcooked. And it should be deveined. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you don't get all the vein when you when you're doing the peeling and shrimp. Dang it, none of them. Yeah, there there were some problems. Just shrimp backs. I was disappointed in the crawfish because I don't normally eat crawfish, but I was like, I want to do the crawfish, and there's no flavor. Garbage. I I had to put Parmesan cheese and Louisiana hot sauce on my jambalaya to give it flavor. And it said it said all of our stuff is served spicy, so be prepared. It's hot. None, no, none of it had any flavor. I've pissed urine that was spicy in there. <laughs> it was terrible, man. And then the big deal out here is this thing called Emo's Pizza. So, it, you know, square pizza. Actually, it's circle, but they chop it into squares. Somebody brought us some of that last night. It's all right. Reminds me of Papa John's Thin Crust. Listen, man, Highway 66, Broadway Oyster Bar, Emo's. Nah, man, St. Louis don't seem like it. I'll tell you what I did do last night. Now, remember when we were at the club and I had the chef make me a uh, chicken sandwich and fries? Yeah. I didn't really get to it uh, because I was like, do I feel like eating this? So it was about three in the morning. I took an Uber to White Castles. <laughs> uh, and there was a White Castle that was actually like six minutes away from here. Yeah. So I got White Castle, dog. I was so happy. Dude, no wonder you had to take a shit, though, while we're doing the podcast today. 
Oh, yeah. That thing was just building and building and building. Man, cooking. Like, cooking. No, oh, man, I can't eat that stuff. I love White Castles, dude. It's so tasty. It, yeah, it tastes good going in. Well, it ain't supposed to taste good going out. It don't feel good going out either. Uh, you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to suffer for what you love, man. <laughs> you know, um, Andy and I are going to be talking about this movie called The Marriage Story with Adam Driver and um, Scarlett Johansson. But before we get to that, and by the way, if you haven't seen this, folks, it's on Netflix. It, this, you talk about acting. But before we get to that, I kind of pick some things off from uh, social media, the internet. I ran across this thing, and it, this has to do with movies and directors. And I thought this might be kind of fun for me and Andy to go over. Uh, I ran across this thing, and it was directors with no bad films. And then it has about was it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine prominent directors. And it lists their films. And what they're saying is, based on this list, they've never done a bad film. I, I, I didn't even want to go through the list until I had Andy here so we could agree or disagree if these are, in fact, flawless films. So uh, let's start with Stanley Kubrick. Uh, and some of these, I, 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 a lot of these I may not have even seen. I don't know if Andy's seen them, but he can tell me. Um, let me... Fear and Desire, 1952. I did not see Fear and Desire. Killer Kiss, 1955. Did not see that. The Killing, 1956. Did not see that. Pass of Glory, 1957. Nope. Spartacus. Yes, I saw Spartacus. 1960. Is it good? I never saw it. My dad loved Spartacus. I never saw it. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a movie for that time. Okay, Lolita, 1962. I did not see it, but I heard it was really good. Dr. Strangelove, 1964. I saw that. Was it good? Yeah, it was, it was, it was all right. Uh, 2001, A Space Odyssey, 1968. It was, it was great at its time. Really? Yeah. Uh, Clockwork Orange, 1971. I thought it was genius. Really? Barry Lyndon, 1975. Did not see it. The Shining, 1980. I, one, one of the best movies. For that time. For that time. Because when I finally saw it, I went, eh. At the time, it was, it was, it's really about that guy going crazy, but then it's also about. At the, it, it, it's it's about the, the, the possession of the the hotel. But Full Metal Jacket, nineteen eighty seven. Uh, I love that movie. Is that? Uh, let me see your war face. Yeah, yeah. That's what. That's the one where the dude shoots himself in the mouth with the rifle, yeah. right? Yeah. Eyes Wide Shut, nineteen ninety nine. Now I didn't. I didn't appreciate that movie. That's Tom Cruise, right? Yeah. And Penelope was it? No, it was uh, his his other his other wife at the time, um, Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Oh, that's right, that's right. I'm thinking of Vanilla Sky. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know that that did it for me either. Uh, but it wasn't a bad. It was just it was just a very trippy movie. I I wouldn't say that it was bad, but man. it wasn't it, it it wasn't at the same caliber as those other movies that came just before. I got to tell you, a Tom Cruise movie that he also did with Nicole Kidman. Well, I forget which one, but they played Irish people. Yeah, coming the the um yeah, I know which one it is. Bad that them acts, I'm telling you, man, accents, they're tough. They're tough. Well, she's Australian and he's Tom Cruise. Right. And they both are bad. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. She's Australian. He's Tom Cruise. Uh David Fincher. Uh 2023, the killer. I don't think I saw that. I never saw that. 2020, Mank. No, didn't see it. I love this movie. 2014, Gone Girl. Great movie. That shit was great. Listen, man, I, I, I know I probably shouldn't do this. But I don't know if you caught it. But in Gone Girl, remember when she forces Ben Affleck to get in the shower with her? Yeah. Ben got a piece, yo. <laughs> Did you catch that shit? <laughs> no, I didn't. When he go to the shower, they, they hit him at a certain angle. Ben got a piece. How do you know it's not a prosthetic and goes, hey, if I want to do this, though, I'm going to I want to do some marketing. I don't know, but you know what I mean, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you somebody else. And then believe me, no diddy, yo. When you look at the scene in um, Ray with Jamie Foxx. Yeah, you told me this one. Yeah. Ladies, I'm telling you. The scene where he, he uh, Regina King, is it Regina? Regina King goes to get his travel bag. 
And he gets up because he knows she's about to see his drugs. Yo, watch when he get up off the couch. Jamie got a piece. <laughs> you can see the head is down to damn to his knee in the slacks. See, now I don't like him any- anymore either. Whoa! You don't have to have everything. We can sing, act. Yeah, he has rich, everything. Rich, famous, got a piece. That's everything. Damn. I got some of everything. <laughs> um, 2011, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Never saw that. I saw it. It was all right. All right. Uh, the Social Network, 2010. I liked it. The Curious Case of Benjamin Benjamin yeah, Button. Button. I never saw That's Brad Pitt, right? Yeah. It's, never it, saw that. It, it, it was good for the moment. I, I, yeah. That's another one they say. The accent. Him doing that Jamaican accent. Brad Pitt does a Jamaican accent. I don't even remember him doing a Jamaican yeah. accent. Uh, Zodiac. I just saw that. That was great. Yeah. 2007. Panic Room. I like that. Yeah, that was good. Fight Club. What's in the box? Of course, that's great. The Game. I didn't know that was David Fincher. Yeah. Oh, no. I said, uh, well, he did do seven, but Fight Club is yeah, not. Yeah. Yeah. What's I in thought the box? you were just doing uh Yeah, I meant Brad to get Pitt. out. Yeah. Fight Club. You like Fight Club, right? Yeah, that was great. Uh, The Game. The Game. I love The Game. You saw the game? Yeah, the game is fantastic. Yeah, seven. Yeah, Alien 3. I did not like Alien 3 as much as Alien 1 and 2. Yeah, I, I don't. Remember 3? Yeah. but Charles the, Dutton's in it? They're all, they're all, yeah. What do you mean, they're all what? I like them. I, li- I like them. I like the Alien movies. Right. I like the, but they're all, you know. The same? The big monster is going to eat you with his face. <laughs> I know, but when you look at Alien versus Aliens. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that topped the... Uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, I didn't see every movie on Yo, there. Yo, David Fitch is a bad yeah, motherfucker. There's not, there's not bad movies on there that I... Uh, the ones I saw, they were all good. They yeah. were all good. So his shit is right. Yeah. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. Now, he's directed some bad movies. Not ones that he's written, but he's directed some. Quentin or David? Quentin. Quentin. Uh, this one. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I don't know how people think that's a great movie. I've watched it again. And it's, I walked out of the theater, man. I watched it again. It's not bad. You just It wasn't what I was oh, expecting. Slow. The Hateful Eight. That's another one that didn't blow me away. It was good, though. It wasn't. It didn't blow you away, but it was good. The yeah. Django Unchained. That was great. Fantastic. Uh, this, yeah. I remember when you did that. Now, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw Inglorious Bastards, 2019. It's good. I didn't. Yeah. It took me a while to see it, but it's good. Death Proof, 2007. I liked it. I did too. I thought I did too. Kill Bill one and two. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. Both. Jackie Brown. It's okay. It was, but he it, it was he was trying to compete with the genre of that movie, and he he did a great job. I think it's a great job. Of course, uh, Pulp Fiction, 1994. Really? Yo, really, on a scale of one to ten, what do you give Pulp Fiction? Oh, it's hard because you got to go to that time period. That time period, that was a brand new kind of way of putting a movie together. Yeah. So I give it a 10 because yeah. he invented that genre, that 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 kind of vibe of a movie. Right. 1992 Reservoir Dogs. I love that movie. I do, too. I do, too. I don't know why I'm a little, but I do, too. I don't know why, though. It, it was a good, it was a good movie. It was. Just, yeah, it was. It's just, it, it's, it. When you put it against all of his other movies, yeah, that's his first movie. Right. Uh, but it was a good movie, and I love how he did certain aspects of that movie. Right. I've never heard of this dude. Dennis Villanueva, 2021, Dune. See, I didn't like Dune that much. I I'm never not saw a big Dune, Dune fan. 2017, Blade Runner 2049. Yeah. Is that the one with um, Ryan Gosling and... I think so, Ford. yeah. I think so, yeah. I never saw that. It's it's okay. 2016 Arrival. Never heard of it. Is that the one with uh what's her name? I don't know, but I think it's the one with the aliens and they're trying to communicate. Uh, it was okay. That one was okay. Uh I think this is the only oh, I think this is the only movie I've ever seen of this dude's Cesario. Yeah, that was good. Didn't they make a sequel? I think they made it like a television series or something like that out of it, I thought. But that was uh, with Benny 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 Del Toro or yeah. Benicio yeah, Del Toro. Yeah, yeah, I did see that. Enemy. I don't remember that. I didn't. I don't know. Prisoners was good. I remember. Oh yeah, 
He did Prisoners. I didn't see. I don't think I That's saw that. That's the one with uh, Hugh Jackman and uh, the, the, oh my God, Hugh Jackman. His daughter's missing, gets kidnapped or something, and is missing, and he's torturing the guy in the shower. I don't think I saw that. Yeah, him and T- you never saw that. Oh, you gotta see that. I think I gotta see it. Uh, and Cindy's 2019. I don't think I saw that. Polytechnic. I don't think I saw that. Yeah. Uh, Maelstrom. And that's like one of them foreign movies because it's got the two dots over the the O. What does that mean? It's it's how you're supposed to make the sound of the O. I don't know if I saw that one. August. 32nd on the Earth, I 1998. I, I definitely did not see yeah, that. Yeah, I ain't never even heard of this dude. But Prisoners was good. Uh, Alejandro G. Inaritu, uh, Amores Peros, 2000. I didn't see it. 21 Grams, that 2003. Was good. Who was in that? Uh, that's Sean Penn. Really? Yeah. What was it about? Uh, oh, wait. Is it the one I think it is? Maybe it's not. Let me see what it is. 21 grams, right? I thought that was the one about your, when your body, dis, when you die, you, you, you lose 20, 21 grams. This sounds like some drug. No, no. It's, it's your soul, even your body. If it's the one I think it is. That's what I thought it was. But let me see if I'm wrong. You can't just put Siri movie, 21 grams. Yeah, I could have. See, that's what the dude meant when he said you go two blocks down the way. No, this is Sean Penn. Yeah, it is. It's the one about when. Like a young Sean Penn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Does it say what it's about right there? Uh, it says a freak accident brings together uh, a critically ill mathematician, a grieving mother, and a born again ex con. But what I remember about it is that the, the idea is that when you die, your weight changes by 21 grams, and that's supposed to be the weight of your soul leaving your body. Really? And then through this, these people are all intertwined together because of a death. So mm. it, it was good. 2006, Babel. I don't know that. 2010, Beautiful. I don't think I saw that. 2014, Birdman. I saw that. That's what Michael Keaton. Right? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. Didn't he get nominated for an Oscar or win an Oscar? I don't know if he won, but yeah, I thought he got nominated. 2015, The Revenant. Yo, that, I love that movie. That's Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Yeah. And then 2022, Bardo. I don't know that one. Dude, I don't know why I can't bring myself to watch The Revenant. It's such a good movie. Is it really? Yeah. That's the one where he fights the bear. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he gets mauled by the bear. I don't, he's know. I don't know if you could say he fought the bear. He, he, he survived. Right. <laughs> he survived the bear. How's that sound? Wes Anderson, 2023 yeah. Asteroid City. I haven't seen it. 2020. Wait, wait. I think I did. Is that the one that was just for, I don't know. Maybe I didn't see it. Uh, 2021, The French Dispatch. Nope. 2018, Isle of Dogs. Nope. 2014, The Great. The Grand Budapest Hotel. I tried to watch that like three times. You tried? <laughs> it was terrible? No, it wasn't terrible. It's just I did, I couldn't get into it. Oh. Uh, 2012, Moonrise Kingdom. No. 2009, Fantastic Mr. Fox. No. 2007, Darjeeling Limited. The Darjeeling Limited. It was all right. That's the one that happens on the train. I, it, it does. That That's the movie that's that's similar to uh, the, the, the Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, and they're just... It's it's just it, it, it's so much dialogue and it's just it's a mm. lot. Um, the Life Aquatics with Steve Zizu. The Life Aquatic. That's the one with Bill Murray, isn't it? I don't know. Might be. Um, it was all right. Two thousand one, the Royal Tannenbaums. I know that's what uh Bill Murray. Yeah, it was all right. It was good. Rushmore, good. And Bottle Rocket. Yeah, I didn't see Bottle Rocket. They're good. They're good movies. They're just. All the characters are so interesting and right. so detailed that uh, you have to pay so much attention and there's so much dialogue to pick up between everybody. It's uh, You really have to have your I think you just have to be clear and really just ingest those, those kind of films. And sometimes I just, I, I can't do it. And, and watching them, watching those kind of films when we couldn't go to the theater and you're like in your house and you have distractions, it's just hard for me to watch those. <clears throat> How long do you give a movie before you check out? I'll watch the whole movie. Really? Yeah, even if it's bad, I want to know. I want to try to figure it out. I want to try to understand it. But I've gone back to watch movies that people have talked about. Like, what um, the movie you just said you hated. Once Upon a Time in America. 
I went back and watched it again. It's not bad. It really isn't bad. It's just not what you wanted. And, you know, I give, I give him credit for doing that. He gave me something that I wasn't expecting, and I, I had to go back and watch it again. And I was like, yeah, it's not bad. I don't think it was the hype. He's, he claims it's his greatest movie ever. I, I don't think it's his greatest movie. How you put that over Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, Django? What? I think Django's his funnest movie ever. Like it's it's a good well, movie. Well, you know why he got through it a thousand fucking times. No, but it's 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 a it, like that has like you when I say fun, you're really rooting for the people in that. You know, right? You're you're and and you hate everybody that you. He really give he lets you. There, there's no doubt about this movie. You don't when you you hate the people you're supposed to hate and you like the people you're supposed to like. And 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 that that movie doesn't give you in your own spot to interpret and, 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 you know, dissect and try to right. get that movie. That's why I said, it's the most fun. It, it, he's telling you, this is the story. This is the way it is. That's it. Well, you were supposed to hate Sam Jackson, but how could you not love him? Yeah. <laughs> character. <laughs> no, you loved him for his acting and what he did, but it, you hated the character because he's the one who sells them out and they're just trying to do a good thing. And, uh, and then you have, uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. That's, Again, you're supposed to hate him, but he was so damn good, good man. But he was, he, that's, like, you, but you had no doubt that you hated that dude. That's how yeah. good he is, though, though. Like, yeah. you really, like, I, I there, there's something about that. There's something very, I think that movie is going to be something that lives on much longer than a lot of the other movies that he right. did, where people will study that, because that that movie was exceptional as far as, uh, the storytelling it, it it like i said it doesn't leave you room to come up with your own right. conclusions you that's the movie dude when i did this dude's podcast well, well actually yeah and this is the network we're going to to array have you seen this guy right yeah and you know he he's he, he's he's always been heavily featured on like cnn msnbc he, he can get political but i remember one of the reasons why i reached out to him was he he was had uh one of the guys in Django who was in the cage uh, and saw uh, Quentin Tarantino get blown up, he had him on his show, and he said, man, I'm going to be honest with you. I think Leonardo DiCaprio is overrated. I don't think that he's one of the best act." I went, what? It was like, and, I, and when I did Toure's show, I said to him, man, what the f*** was you thinking when you said that? And he goes, well, when you really look at his body of work, like, what has he really done? I was like, man, I couldn't disagree with you. What? Yeah, that's insane. Django, Basketball Diaries, This Boy's Life, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, to name a few. Just because you do something so well that it looks easy doesn't mean that you're not great at what you do. Shit, it don't look easy. When you look at them performances. But it, it looks easy to the person on the outside going, oh, you know, it just Shit. seems so natural. He seems very natural Absolutely. what he does. Absolutely. But when you, but, but take that, take that, what I just said about how natural it looks, how it, like it comes to him. And it, no, it's not easy to do that. But how, how it looks on screen, it seems. Right. But now take all those characters that we just talked about and now put him in Django. Yeah. And that character has nothing to do with any of those characters and how he ma- he seamlessly turned in to the uh, 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 plantation uh, a slaver. You know, James Cameron said that he tells this story, which I like. And he goes, you know, we're casting, putting a movie together for Titanic. And he goes, uh, the studio wanted DiCaprio. So I said to DiCaprio, hey, man, I really think you would be great for this part. I want you to come in and screen test. And he goes, you want me to audition? And he goes, yeah. Oh, uh, go ahead. What you need, a shower, Joe? Yeah, extra. Like I have. Oh. I've been in so many hotels that I ran out of shit. And getting them to come back up there is such a pain that they give you little ones. Right. This lady came over here with the whole. She's about the second person that works here that has is missing teeth. No, I haven't seen two that had all their teeth there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, listen, man. Listen, dentistry is... It, it's expensive. Not only is it expensive, but it's not something that you have to go through. I'm missing a tooth. I don't want to go through it. So uh, he goes, I have to audition. 
And uh, he goes, yeah, man, this is a major movie. You, you, you have to audition. And he goes, uh, he goes, well, I, I'm, you know, basically saying, I'm Leonardo DiCaprio. Why would I audition? And then Cameron goes, all right, well, nice. You came in. Glad to see you. Have a good, thank you for your time. And he goes, Leonardo goes, oh, all right. And he goes, prior to the audition, he had an attitude. He was kind of, you know, being a big baby. But he said, the moment he yelled action, it's like the heavens open up, the light shine down, and he went, that's Jack. So to your point, he's a bad dude. I, I saw this one where the, they're, they're standing there and they're getting ready for the take, and he's, he's doing something with his hand. Wolf of Wall Street, I think. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's just doing something with his hand. He's getting ready. And then, and then the scene's about ready to start, and, right. then, and then they yell action, and you just see him go. And it just like, but his face, everything just went whoop. Right. And it was the hand, the whole thing he was doing was right. just, he was just working it out. He came in. Right. I was like, what the, f- the to, to be that detailed, to be that. It, it, I, you, I respect it. I respect it. That's that. why when people say they, they don't, if, if when someone makes it look easy, you should respect it more. Yeah. It's not because it's easy that, they, that it looks easy. It's yeah. because they're great that it looks easy. Yes. Uh, okay, so now, uh, I, you know, what made me so interested in this movie uh, was, again, perusing through Instagram. I think it might have even been TikTok. The title was The five, Top Five uh, Greatest Acting Moments on Film, Part Whatever. And this was in the five. They showed a scene, the big fight scene uh, between Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson. So that scene made me curious about this movie. So I downloaded it. And I mean, one of the reasons why I really wanted to discuss it and, and get into it with Andy, because again, I, I've, I've kind of felt like I've been working with Andy long enough now and know him enough now to where like, you know, it's like a teammate on a team. You know, you know, you know what your man can do. And you go, man, if he can do what I know he could do and I do what I know I could do, it's going to be some... So, because he's been married, I've been married, he, we've both been divorced, me twice, you only once, right? Yeah. Planning on keeping it that way. Yeah. Uh, you know, he got kids, I got kids, he, you know, got custody of his kids uh, and all of that. So, it, there was a lot of that element of that, just that human element that I know a lot of people have gone through. Um, and so, in this movie, context-wise, uh, Adam and Scarlett Johansson play a married couple that's going through divorce and they got a kid and um I love how it starts though. Yes. Like she's 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 kind of narrating who he is and describing him and then when she's done he does the same with her and of course this is all the good about each other and then once that narration is finished they cut to both of them in therapy. Um for their divorce. For their divorce. For their separation, which yes. is eventually going to be their divorce. And, you know, th- at one point, uh, they had written these letters about each other. A- and this is kind of what she's narrating, what was written. And the therapist goes, all right, so now why don't you read uh, your letter? And she doesn't want to read it. She's being total, doesn't want to read it, attitude. So then the, the, the therapist is like, well, this is the whole point of you guys being in here to go through these exercises to try to work it out. And then not Adam, work it, not work out the marriage, work out the divorce or work out the separation. Well, I, weren't they there to try to, no, they no. were trying to work out their separation. So for their divorce, okay. They were just trying to connect with reconnect and, and speak to each other so that they could have, well, a, I guess it's so and, bad that she didn't want to do it. And when he, Adam starts saying, but Hey, that's what we're here for. She sees them as them teaming up. Yeah. I love this. So part. She storms out and goes, well, if you guys are going to just each other's, I'm going to go. And at first when I saw this, I, I, I kind of just went, um, I was turned off by her. Uh, like, damn, she ain't even trying. She's not even trying. But I guess I interpreted that wrong because I thought that was therapy. I thought they were in therapy no, they, to fix it. No, they were in, so that they could come to a, a, a peaceful resolution with their their through their separation into their divorce. Right. It was it was done deal that they're getting divorced. But what's what's funny about. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they say it. He says it in there. This is this is to, to uh, you, for your separation, eventual divorce. He says it, the therapist. Because when they show her later, 
like when they show the three of them in in bed, uh, her, him, and their kid in the middle as he's reading to his son, and then she kind of turns away from she's crying him and she starts. I'm like, dude, she still loves him. Yeah, but that's what she's. That's we'll get all the way through this if I if I, if I say that, but that's what the that's what she says in the letter that she doesn't want to read because she doesn't finish it and when when she when we're getting the narration she doesn't finish the letter in the letter she said and i will always love you she knew that she was always going to love him she just didn't right. couldn't yeah, this, and this is where the story take this is and everything in the middle is how the story takes place right uh i was really surprised like how i felt about this because i thought you know, you said you wanted me to see it, and then I was, and I'm getting married at the time, and I'm like, I don't know, you know, this is bad I mean, energy. Yeah, I'm gonna watch the thing about, it. but I didn't. This is a really well done movie. I didn't get bad energy from it. I, right. I, I got, I got what it, what it is. I got exactly what it's supposed to be. Um, but where I align with you as, as as teammates, I mean, we both had the initial same feeling, and I still have that feeling. But I, but I understood about her. Yeah. Yeah. Because I wanted to be like, you know, I would love to call this podcast what I'm about to say, but we can't, which would be, I, I, because <laughs> I can't or, understand. Or, or this, this, right. I just don't understand. I, I, I don't understand. And I don't understand because I think because marriage is a part, is about communication. And the thing that was lacking here was communication. And that's my interpretation of it. Now, because I took a few uh, breaths and I, and I thought about the movie and I really went over it, I guess it's not just about communicating your feelings. There's also the other half, which is listening to the other person's feelings. And not always do they say it, but they say it. And Adam Driver, his character in this, wasn't listening to her. So it, they were both at fault, but I really feel like if you really have something that's bothering you and the other person isn't picking it up on you, you have a duty because to make them, to make them hear you. Now that is, I, I, I know that people are going to write in, tell me why I'm wrong. And I think that a lot of women are going to tell me why I'm wrong and that men should be better listeners. And I agree with that. No women expect you to be mind readers, but I think that if you, if you want to save a marriage, you want, if you really, or you want to, you're not getting, uh, the uh, you're not getting fulfilled from your partner emotionally because he's not giving you what you need to grow, what you need. You have to make sure that he understands that because sometimes in life, the person who is working to be successful, to create a good home life, to create, uh, to pay for things, to be able to ha have a nice house, put people where they want to go. Yes, it is driven by their own desires, but it's also the desire to be successful and to and to try to make life better for everyone. And sometimes you don't hear that the other person is suffering because you're working on this, but they're not working on it. And you have to make them aware of it because they think that they're doing the right thing. So that that's my that was my that was my issue. And, and if they think they're doing the right thing and you aren't letting them know that they're not doing the right thing, well then whose fault is that? Well, but then again, we should be better listeners. We should be paying attention when someone is unhappy. We should try to figure out why they're unhappy. Maybe we need to ask questions of why they're unhappy. But a lot of times when you're in a relationship, and obviously this is in the movie, what's wrong? What's wrong? What nothing. Okay. Well, you know women have a way of saying nothing that lets you know it's something. Yeah, but we also have a way of, you said nothing, right? If I said, are you hungry and you're starving, say you're hungry. Don't say, mm, I could eat. Okay, you're right technically, but if and you know we have to play this game because this is the game that women play. So when you go, are you hungry? And depending on how she answers, if you've been with her long enough and you know her, then you know she's really hungry, even though she's saying no, because she's saying it in such a way where you should pick up the signal. This bitch is hungry, but she got an attitude. Well, how about this? How about you just say what you are? How about you just say what you're feeling? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. But that's, well, come on, man. I, I know, but this is where, why we are different. This is why men and women are different. We communicate differently. And it's hard when you're, communi you're communicating in your language and we're interpreting your language. Sometimes when you're interpreting someone else's language, you don't get all the words right. And we're very easy. We don't need interpretation. 
We, we, we're very specific about it. We're hungry. We're sleepy. We're horny. I, I don't know what else is in that in, in, in the mail uh, uh, catalog that we, that we are. Those are, the, those are the, th- the three things that we are. Hungry, sleepy, and, and, and horny. And, and you forgot to add the word me before all of those. Me hungry, <laughs> me sleepy, me horny. That's, we're Neanderthals. But we say it's it. that simple. But we'll say it what, what we are. And, and we, and, and we want to protect. We want to we wanna provide. Yeah. Even, even, you know, I, my girl makes more money than me. I still want to provide. I still do things to provide. I might not make the, as much money as she does, but I'm providing. She has a better savings account, but I'm out there with my little rub of my quarters together to pay for dinner that night. I'm still providing. It's what we do, but you have to tell us things. You have to communicate. Our language is very simple. And, and, and listen, I'm defending men in this, and I'm not trying to defend men. We should be better listeners. We are in an age where we should be better at what we do as well. But, you know, it's, it's very easy just to, to let us know exactly how you feel. I, that hungry thing is, 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 the, is the one that gets me because that does happen all the time. Are you hungry? Uh, what is uh? I, I know what I'm hungry. You know why? Because I want to eat. Right. Maybe that's what we should say instead of saying, are you hungry? I mean, do you want to eat? Because that eliminates it because maybe they want to eat, but they're not really hungry, but they would like to go sit down and, and, and talk and, and, you know, have some food in front of them. And maybe then they'll want to eat something. I don't know. I don't know the, I don't understand what's behind the feminine language. You know, that scene uh, where she goes to meet Laura Dern's character who ends up being her lawyer character's name is Nora. And it's like, dude, whatever you audition for, a meaty part in a TV show or a movie, they always give you in the sides at least that one page that has like a nice paragraph because that's a big moment. That's 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 where they see if you really have the chops to, to earn this role. Dude, when she starts talking and, and Laura Dern goes, I want to hear your story. From the time she starts to that scene being over, I went... That's got to be five pages of dialogue, just from top to bottom, because that moment goes on for a minute. That story she tells her, and I'm just going, oh, my God. When I'm going out on auditions and I look at five pages and, you know, most of it is back and forth but with somebody. So they're lines, just lines. But then again, depending on how meaty the part is, there'll be that one paragraph. And you got to break that down in pieces. Like with lines, you could go, I could go, blah, 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 repeat it. Blah, 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 blah. After about the fifth time I repeat a line, I got it. With paragraphs, you can't just read once, memorize, I got it. I read twice. You got, you got a section, chunks. I got to go over a chunk for 10 minutes. Then the next chunk. Then the next chunk. And then when you finish all the chunks, now you got to put them together and you got to find your rhythm and how to say all that without seeming like you're reading. Yeah, you got to feel the the moments and the flows and the highs and the lows. So that's why I'm again I'm going. That's where the character comes in. That's where the character comes in, and that's where you build such a respect for what for actors. Because I'm going, dude. That's a lot of dialogue that you got to memorize, and you she's acting through tears, emotion, and that's. The where I go, man, sometimes if I think I'm good at this, it humbles me. I go, I don't know. I don't know if I'm good at this because I don't know if I can pull that off. That's a lot of dialogue. <laughs> Jesus. Like, I went, I watched that and I went, she memorized all that and then performed. So when you see actors do Shakespeare, do you, I know you're oh, in the- that's that's, and now we talk about some linguistic tongue now. The dialogue, but here's the funny thing, and I had fun doing this, and that's why I did the bit. Like, when uh, I remember I posted a clip of Denzel doing Shakespeare, and I made up, like, all these retorts to people's responses, but as a Shakespearean character. And I mean, Andy, people, the responses and the laughs, 
but that's me comedically what I do. Yeah. Like, like I always said, if I, if I got a chance to do an actual skit, like a Saturday night live skit of that character, you know, that my Lord, hence he's out here. If I got a chance to do that at one point, I, I had the character like, I'm like a gladiator Roman type and in walks a black dude and a Hispanic dude. And I go, hence, they're here, my friends, Spicator and writers. So that that kind of making up, yeah. like, you know what I mean? I, I, I could do that in my sleep, comedically. Now, if I had to seriously go, and Tawith B is the Lord of Shant, who shall Shanti of, of I, I, I don't know that I could, I don't know that I could do that. That's some, I think about Lawrence Fishburne every time I, when I. Hence he, to thou cradle, will I beeth only a flame of fur can fight the minions in the, that, that, I know I can act it, but them words, man, them words are tough. That, that shit is tough. Uh, yeah, and now I remember it because I had went over it when I couldn't remember what I was saying when I went, uh, my lord, it's my lord, but that's what I said. My lord, let it be known that Xerxes is a kind god king. As the officer's declaration is an alternative to war. Now let me speak with the nobles, or I will engage with my military. Hermetheus, please spare me of your banality. It's not about war. This is about my daughter's hand in marriage. So not to try to seduce me, nor bore me, but the belligerence of your insolence. So, you know, I wrote that. You know, when I did the other bit, wretched is how I feel as I spew these words of hostility from my lips. How the air you are, Lakeisha, the beauty of my seduction. How I long to ravage the insides of your clavicle. But first I must silence these roars that stem from my belly due to hunger. For it is only fitting for a king to dine on the killing of a carcass after a day of duly wages. How there he is, my son, my seed, my young loin, the mirrored me that spawns from the spewage of my male mayonnaise. I want you to take these medals of currency, go down to the local marketplace, and trade them for a feast of yeast and wine. Now, hither away from the third planet from the sun is played by darkness and a command from the higher lords. Only when it's darkness among us will I fall to bended knee and take the wet, sweet nectar which flows from the power of your kitty cat. <laughs> now it's, but it makes sense. You get it? Yeah. It's, but it makes sense. So, and you know, goddamn genius! That's why I know I could do that, but I can't. Um, I don't think you'd have a problem with it if you had that kind of uh, <sighs> commitment to doing a show, a movie. That's a hell of a commitment. Um, I didn't like the scene where, you know, they're rehearsing how to serve him the papers because he comes in cheerful. He's got a great relationship with the mom, a great relationship with the sister. He hugs her. He kisses her on the cheek. She's talking about she's got an audition. She has to do a character with an English accent. He's playful. And then the ambush. Here's the papers. Well, she can't serve him. And so she wants one of them to hand it to him. She, was, she has moved forward with the divorce. She's going forward. He's not ready for the divorce. Right. Um, but before we, get, before we get all the way there, what did you think about Laura Dern's character, the, the lawyer? Did you? Because I, I, I thought she was awesome as the lawyer. I did too, especially when you see her go head to head against Ray Liotta. Yeah. But before I get to that, let me say this, and I forgot to say this. Here's the thing about this, this, this movie that was a little depressing. I'm rooting for Adam and Scarlett. And, and, and what I liked about the movie is it's a slice of real life. This is life. It ends bad. It's, it's tragic. It's sad. People divorce. They break up. They fight. But I was really, I, like, when, when at one point when she went to the room and she starts crying, I, in my mind, in my head, like I'm screaming at the movie screen, I'm going, man, just go in there and kiss her. Go lay with her. If you still love her and you don't want to be divorced, you know, she, she's mad, you're mad, she's in pain, you're in pain. Nigga, go in the room. But, of course, he didn't do that. And that's probably what, if he would have done that, would have saved the marriage. Or extend the marriage. And okay. still And still end up with the problems because they couldn't fix their problems. Yeah, I, you know, I have this saying that I go, never give up on something if you, if you love it. You, how do you walk away from something you love? As, as long as I, as, as sometimes as much as I hate this business, I love what I do. So I can't quit what I love. But then I'm going, that's easy for you to say on the outside looking in. 
But if you're in that situation that they're in, sometimes the shit just you, you got to walk away. I think I, I think it depends on how much you love yourself. You got to love. Your, I think that's what it comes down to. You have to prioritize yourself where where you realize that I love myself so much that I can't do this, and I love them so much I can't do this to them. That's what the difference is. I think for me, it's more about doing it to myself than them. Maybe because I can't control what they, what do. they do. But you can. But be- I, I don't feel like I can control what I do. But it, when you know that you aren't good for them, or when you your challenges, which you need to make your life work to make you happy inside, to make you fulfilled, and that's not going to work for them, there has to be a point where you love them enough that you want to give them that. You want them to be able to have that, and you know you're never going to be. They're never going to have that together. Right. Uh, but you know this is a different world because. We're not in the 50s when a woman, you know, the the man was who she worked for, basically. You know, in the relationship, the woman worked for the man. Think about it. The man went to work. He was working for the family, but he went to work. He was getting fulfilled outside of the family. Her fulfillment came from within her job in the home. Working for him. Ah, the good old days. Those were the days when the woman did what the man said. Because if she didn't punch in, he'd punch her out. That was her job, Andy. Yes, sir. No, sir. Right away, sir. Anything he wanted, he got it. The dinner was always hot. What was cold needed to be cold. Or fresh iced brewed coffee. Or even a nice cold tall beer. And if she definitely defied him, he gave her mouth a fistful of knuckles. Wow, the good old days. I wish we could go back to that. Brett Butler, yeah? That was an alley-oop, thanks. You're welcome. Um, I'm going to tell you this, yo. When he goes in to see Ray Liotta initially, uh, it just brought me back to when I was getting divorced. And I'm just like, hearing lawyers talk is so scary. It makes your skin crawl. When he goes, yeah, I'm going to need a $25,000 retainer. I'm $900 an hour. Then he points to his guy. He's $400 an hour. And I'm thinking, like, you know how fast they're going to eat through that. I've never had a lawyer go, this is the retainer. Oh, we didn't use all of it. Here's some money back. They eat through that. And I'm going, what's so f***ed up about the lawyer was scary to me. They're like mechanics. They know you don't know. So you don't know if they're making up just to run up a bill. Did anybody follow you? You, you might want to get a private inge- investigator, you, uh, a forensics accountant. Like, oh my, do I really need that? I need a forensics accountant. I need, a, I need a, a private investigator, really? And if you argue it, you know, they'll tell you, well, you, we're not giving you the best chance to win this case if you don't give us the tools we need to help you fight this thing. But you don't know. Well, and that was what was interesting about Laura Dern, Dern's character and then Ray Liotta. He comes out, you meet him first, and he's saying, you got to do, well, you don't meet him first. Actually, you meet Laura Dern first. And she said, you need to do this, 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 and this. And let me tell you, honey, and and they're like friends, but they're not yeah. friends. She's a lawyer. Right. But she made it feel like it was. And a friend, like, I'm going to take right. care of you. Right. She, and that was her job. She was going to take care of her. She was going to get her everything. And- but Ray didn't. Well, Ray said, this is what you got. Oh, we got to have to file this in New York. You're because you let her come out here. You let her do this. You let her do this already. It's going to cost you this, this, and this. And he goes, we, we just agreed to, we were not, we're not, she's not like that. We're not going to let this happen. She might not be like that, but her lawyer was. And even Ray said to him, look, by the time this is over, you're going to hate me. Whereas with Laura Dern, she gave her coffee, tea, biscuits, took her shoes off, made her feel like, you know, I'm your friend and, and it felt like a friendship. But in the legal system with the kid, the the woman has the upper hand. And the, the That's so crazy. And they want equality. Tell me why the man has to pay for both their lawyers. Well, because the woman, ideally, because if we go back to the 50s thing that I just said, he's the one who has and controlled the money. And she's the one who worked at home and doesn't have the money. So you mean to tell me as far as we have advanced as a society, we can't advance past them Stone Age ideology. No, we and we don't. Uh, we really don't because when uh, I got divorced, um, now 
I could have got a lawyer and I could have done it a different way. But I was like, I, I really related to the Adam Driver character in this because I was like, I don't need a lawyer. I just, all I want to do is be able to have my kids. And she wants to, she wants 50, she wants us to be able to have 50% of the time each. Um, I, that's all I cared about. And then I got the packet and she had in there some child support and tax things and who got to claim the kids and all. And if I wanted to, and I know, and I knew this, she made more than me. I worked right. at, I worked at Saks Fifth Avenue. Um, she worked uh, in the building industry, uh, the new home building, which was on fire in Arizona at that time. Right. So she's making more money than me. I could have easily uh, gone to a lawyer and said, uh, she's trying to get me, she's trying to get me to pay child support. Uh, I want, I want spousal support. I want the kids full time because she works all this time and I can't work these. I can't work on weekends, certain times on weekends because she needs to be able to work on weekends. Cause that's when she meets clients. That's part of what her job was. So I was limited in what I could do because of her. I could have easily went in and gone. Yeah. I, I need some money, but how many, unless, unless it's somebody that is multimillionaire person and you are, you've been holding their bag for the last few years, holding their, their, their purse while they went to their events. I don't know. The guys do that. Do we take the money? Uh, I don't think so, but I, I think that's because we've been brainwashed not to. Well, but they've been told to do a certain things a different way too and this is how the system works we all we all are participating in the culture of the system you know the crazy thing is and this is why i think sometimes we as men have problem with feminists because if you're really out there screaming equality then you should be just as upset that the system is not where it should be even if it's against your favor you know what i'm saying no what do you mean? No, no, you should. So, 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 so if you're a feminist and you're screaming equality, yeah. you mean to tell me you, you going, we want things to be equal. You're not fighting to go, well, then I should be able to pay for my own lawyer and not have the man be forced to pay for his lawyer and mine. Until total equality comes benefits in that, in the non-equality sector are, are still going to be embraced. You would have to prove that equality. And you think that's okay. We do it. We do it in, in black and white relationships. I, I'm, I'm too. asking you personally. Do you think that's okay? No, but I think structurally people do it because uh, until inequality is is the the until the playing field is leveled, you 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 take what you can get until the playing field is leveled. Because until it's level, you're still working from uh, for, uh, against yourself. Okay, I hear what you're saying, but I just want to be clear. Do you think that's right? Personally, oh, of course not. We would we would want it to be equal. That's what we would want it to be is equal, and it's not equal. So if it's not no, it, if it's not happening, to, if it's happening to you, no, it's not right. You want things to be equally, and justice should be equal to all, but it's not. And again, I go back to the playing field. If it's not, you're going to take the win that you can get over here because you know you're going to take a loss over on the other side. I, I don't agree with it. And I think that in, I, I think especially in dealing with children and marriage, there should be, that needs to complete, completely revamp because women are not always the best parent. And that's one of the biggest problems in that women aren't always the best parent. I, I can, I can speak honestly to that. Women are not always the best parent. And the fact that there's men who want to be a parent and can't even see their kids because of the way uh, the system set up. You know, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get too personal into this because it's other people's lives that I'll be talking about right now. But I do know that uh, it's very one-sided. The woman, the woman reigns supreme on that. Is that right? No, but no, but that's why I'm just saying that. You know, don't scream feminism, 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 only because you need it to work when you need it to work for you. If you're gonna scream feminism, then die on that hill. When it's turned, when it's when it's time to make things how it really should be, but not just to your benefit. But that's not what feminism, that's not what modern feminism is about. Modern feminism, this is just this is going to devolve into a bad conversation. Modern feminism is about women getting the rights and authority over the sweet spots in life, not about being in the mud at the same time as well. When we talk about equality. 
and job equality. We're talking about great jobs. We're not talking about shit jobs. They're okay with men working all the shit jobs. Why are they okay with that? Because that's fine. Those are shit jobs. They don't want to fight for those jobs. They only want to fight for the best jobs. Uh, so when we talk politics, when we talk uh, CEOs, all those women aren't equally distributed across those. But then, you, like again, it's that Jordan Peterson thing. What, do you want to be a bricklayer? It's ninety. It's over ninety percent men. Do you, don't you think you should fight for those jobs then too? Shouldn't you have the right to be a bricklayer? Shouldn't they, shouldn't, uh, they? shouldn't you be a garbage man? Yes. Shouldn't you be a plumber? Yes. But well, they don't want those jobs. No, we, when we talk about these fights, these arguments, we're talking about the best jobs. We're talking about upper level jobs, not about equality. It's not about equality. It's not about a representative equality. It's about a representative equality into the best parts of life. That's where equality stands. Because again, going back to the uh, a previous episode, everything is based on financial wins, not on inner creative uh living listen man i i my my uncle was a one of the be, one of the best people in the world one of the best people in the world as a as a human opened his heart up uh married someone that wasn't from his country had a kid uh and had more of his kids owned a house owned a car got them to school did everything he could for him he was a janitor at the hospital he didn't complain about being a janitor at the hospital. He wasn't mad that other people had better jobs than him. He worked hard, and his fulfillment was with, within him and his family and that he was able to provide for his family and do things for his family. There is no that, – that is not the lesson that anyone is learning today. So I, I don't – as long as it's going to be about a, fin a financial reward, we're not going to advance. We're going to fight about – um, the structure, the way the structure is set up, because it's only about the top part of this life. It's not about all of us working to, to better the world, better our families, better who we are as people. What did you think of uh, Alan Alda's character? It was a good character for him to play because it seems like an Alan Alda character where he's the good guy and he's not going to... And and again, that's the is this the moral of the story? The good guy gets over he gets fired they bring in ray liotta and then the two dogs fight it out the the i couldn't help but make this comparison the to me ray liotta was the joe biden i mean it was the ray liotta was the donald trump to alan Ar alan alda's joe biden well it, it just it just because when they show that important scene where it looks like when they're having the meeting between Laura Dern and Alan Alda and, of course, Adam and Scarlett, basically Nora's whooping Adam's ass. So much so that Alan goes, can we get a sidebar? And they go into the, to the other office to kind of figure things out. And you see Adam's frustration hit a, hit, a, hit a peak when he starts to tell him that story. And he goes, excuse me, am I paying for this story? And it, and it just seemed like he needed a bigger, meaner dog. Yeah, and and that's not who Alan was, and in comes. That's why I love it when they cut from that to Ray, Ray coming with all the boxes, right? But here's 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 the problem with that, and this is where the story is interesting. And if you if you pick this up, Alan Alda's character, his lawyer, was never about winning. It was about understanding what the system was, understanding that what he was going to get out of it, and understanding that he wanted those people to be a fan. It, it, a broken family, but nevertheless, a family be able to look at each other, respect each other and do the best for the kid and not be hate each other. Right. That was Alan. That's that's that lawyer's uh, objective, because he said this is this is he basically told him he's not getting the kid and they're going to there's a good chance that he's not going back to New York. He he lays it out. We can work on these things, but he let him know that it's not really going to happen that way. Oh, my God. And, and and the other idea is, yeah, you can have this big old fight, but what happened at the end? It happened exactly the way Alan Alda's character said basically what was going to happen. So, yeah, you can do the fight. You can get in the ring. You can mix it up. You can feel better about the fact. Because remember what he says. He goes, I want my kid to know I fought for him. Well, no. Who did you fight for, him or for yourself? Because if you're doing it for him, you want his life to be good. You want him to be at peace. Right. 
So who are you fighting for? This movie has me pissed off all the time because, <laughs> because yeah, because, well, she's not explaining to him. He's not understanding himself. He's not, he's letting other people, he wanted to be, he did have the intent of doing this without a lawyer and making it not making it very peaceful. But the other she part, did too. she did too. But here's the other part. She doesn't communicate. She doesn't say what she needs. So she needs that someone to get what she needs. She can't do it. He would have walked all over her. She would have given him what he wanted because she doesn't have the ability to put stand up for herself in that in the marriage or in the divorce to say it. She couldn't say she couldn't read that letter. It would have said, and I always love you, but I need to go find me. That's what she that's what needed to be said in that in that. I mean, I need to find me. I have worked to be for here for you. You have ignored the fact that we were going to do other things where I had a blossoming career and I took a step back for you. But I need this. So either I'm going to go out to L.A. and we can be separated and see if we can put this together or we, we're getting a divorce. But she couldn't say that. That's that's what would have changed the movie. Not just going in because she was crying. It's easy to be there for someone when they're in need. It's not easy to be for someone when they're in development. I was going to say something else about this court scene and maybe I'll go back to it. But now that you're on this, I, it, I have to jump to the moment, the big fight. Because some of that was in there of what you were saying. Dude, I'm telling you, people, when you see this, and this was the moment that I was saying was in the top five best acting scenes, that fight. And 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 we we I want to say we've all been there, or we've at least felt that level of from him punching the wall to the shit he said to what he did after he said it. And just like I'm saying with the memorization of all that dialogue that for me is the actor's dream to be able to get in the ring with somebody toe for toe in an acting moment and we're going back and forth like that you got to be wary of stepping over each other's lines i'm wondering how many takes did they have to do you have to reset up for different angles and close-ups and to maintain that level of emotion through take after take Maybe some mistakes, some flub lines. That I, the, the science of that is gorgeous to me. When he said that thing, and he goes, after he punched the wall, and he goes, sometimes I wake up and I hope you die, or you get hit by a car and you die. And if it wasn't for our son knowing how that might affect him, as long as I would know he would be okay, I wish your death. And then after he says it, the way he breaks down and cries falls to his knees. She comes over top of him, puts her hand on his head. He says, I'm sorry. He grabs and cradles her leg. Jesus, who does the Oscar go to? Well, between the two of them, who gets the Oscar? I got to tell you, though, uh, I would have hated that scene if there wasn't a scene that took place before that's such a throwaway scene. But without that scene, that scene would have seen over the top to me and not resonated with me. What we'll scene was before that? When they meet, when Alan Alda and uh, and Laura Dern and then Scarlett Johansson and and Adam Driver meet for the very first time in that office, yeah. And then he, they're going to order a sandwich, uh -huh. and he's looking and he's, just, and he's just so, and he can't order, and 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 she, Scarlett Johansson grabs the menu from him, right, and she goes, okay, he's going to have, and she gives him yeah, his yeah, order, yeah, yeah. and then she gives him her, her order. And he goes, and then she looked at him and he just shook his head. Yes. Right. These people are meant to be together. They just can't be together because they don't have the space for each other. And, and the idea of him saying that to her, I want you dead. <laughs> I want you dead. She probably has had the same feelings because she didn't, she, she obviously you're going to take that personal, but I think that you want him, her dead. And I, I may be going over, over this, but, I'd rather have you dead <laughs> and be with my son than have you away from me. Right. You are mine. We were together. This is right. us. We were here forever and you're breaking us up and you should be dead over being away from me. Right. And when that scene happens before where he can't even order without her, with and he, he needs her so much. She is so much a part of him. Even more while I'm rooting for why can't they get this right? Because she can't survive him, his ego, his needs, 
And his are rightful needs. He needs this. This is what he's done. This is what he was doing. This is where she felt she was part of this life that she they created. Well, but but he says the key thing in the fight. You chose this. Yes, she so was, when she's like, my needs and you're so selfish and we didn't do it. He, he goes, I didn't put a gun in your head. You chose, chose this. this. So That's, now because you want out, I'm I'm supposed to... It's never that she wanted out. She just wanted something that was hers, and she didn't communicate it. She let it get too far. She let it get out of hand. She should have said, hey, I... I need when when that time that they had to go back to new, to uh, brings up the time, you could have taken that job, but you didn't want to. You wanted this job. You wanted... That's where you have to go. I need this. Hey, I, I'm support. I, I've been with you. We're going through this, but I need this. I need this. This is, I, 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 I didn't give up anything, but I wanted to be with you. But my career has been sitting here and I need this. I need it for me. Right. But she didn't have it in her to say. She was, because it was, she was the person that he needed to be able to get his order out, to, to, to speak for him when he couldn't speak for himself. And she was on the back burner and she obviously had talent. He she, they talked about her directing something. He never, he never let her direct because it was going to be his next project. And then she goes out there and now she's directing. She had the talent, but her talent was being unfulfilled, unused. She needed it. She didn't express it, but that's why I still go back to this. It's your job to express Th your that's needs. That's why I'm saying I'm not trying to play the blame game. But how can you fault him for something that you didn't do? Well, it, when he, this, this ends, is there a chance that they get back together someday? Someday when they're both at peace? I don't know. I, I, I don't think that's even part of the concern. But I'm, I'm curious to something that we haven't talked about. And I know we're getting there in time, so I want to talk to you about this. You had a problem with the, the uh, person who comes over to evaluate their parents. Okay, but before we get to that, I just want to ask you two quick things. If you had to give the Oscar to somebody between the two of them in that moment, who do you give it to? Well, here's the upside of this, of what you're just asking me. The Oscar is always for best male and best female. No, no, I know, they don't can do that. They can both no, win No, no, I'm not going to let you do that. I, I'm not going to let you do that. That's the rules. I know the rules, but, but I'm not going to put the pressure to you. If you had to pick one of them in that moment, who are you giving it to? I'd probably give it to Scarlett Johansson. I'm because, giving it to Adam Driver. No, but I'll tell you why. It's because of the other scene. The other scene makes that scene work for me. And she did that so perfectly with the sandwich. The sandwich scene makes that other scene work See, for me. This is what you do sometimes. It's like you, you're, you're, you're escaping the situation. I hear what you're saying about the other scene. I'm talking about that scene when they're both going at it like Ali Frazier. Then I have to give it to him because he, to be able to hit the note of I wish you were dead. And then that cry and breakdown. And knowing that this is a, but see, this is what this, the interpretation is this is a child not getting his way. I wish you were dead. Rather. I don't know about a child. Listen, it's, I, it, 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 it's, it's a, a childish, woman, it's a childish emotion. Okay. But a woman can drive you there. Yes. Work. Yes. Well, we, we, we know that without a doubt. <laughs> well, it was my second question. Have you ever been driven to that point? And have you ever done that in an argument? That level of uh, rage and anger and yelling. Have you ever been to that point? Yeah, I've been to the... I, 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 I was emotionally immature, even in my first, in my first marriage, in, in my relationships. I, I yelled. There was yelling that went on in my family. I yelled. I was a yeller. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was a yeller, even to the point where my kids were nervous. And I still, even at the beginning of my relationship with Tara, Tara would say, yeah, you, you just, you just get, you get so angry. And, uh, and I have in the la in my time with Tara, it, it, only the first few years, really, it sounds really horrible when I say it that way. The first few years I, I would get so irritated. It wasn't with Tara, it was with my boys. And I would get so mad because I, listen, the only way I can explain this is I didn't have money. I didn't, I, I, I was, I wasn't living paycheck to paycheck. I was living day to day. <clears throat> I, I have a story about uh, how I, I had put up, I had a bass guitar and I put it up on uh, Craigslist and uh, it was on Craigslist with some other stuff that I put out and I sold some stuff and it was timely because I needed it for my kids. And then about a month later, man, I was broke and I had to go pick up my kids and I had no food in the house, not a lick of food. I didn't know how I was going to eat that night. I had nothing. And, uh, 
and I get I get a call and this and it's the phone and you know I pick up the phone and he says this dude goes hey man you still got that bass guitar I go yeah he goes it's in good shape yeah he goes I got a gig tonight man I need your guitar and I go he goes how much and I told him how much it was he came over bought my guitar I gave him I had a, I had some extra uh, strings too I go you want these too because I obviously I'm not gonna have a guitar he goes yeah I'll take it man thank you yeah I got a gig tonight that's gonna work out perfect for what I need it for I go great took that. Man, got in my car, put a couple dollars of gas in, ran over, got some food for my kids, filled up the house so that I had groceries for the week, took care of everything that I could take care of with the little bit of money that I had, and I was safe. So when my kids f***ed up and put me in a, in, a fin- in a more financial bind, when I was trying to just make everything work, I mean, it, we're talking like a jigsaw puzzle, trying to get these pieces to fit together. I would lose it because I just didn't have it in me. And, and, and who were you yelling at? I'd yell at my boys. Like Harris. that? To that level? Not to that level of wishing you no, were dead. No, 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 no. I'm not wishing you were dead. I'm just saying in terms of I'm punched, I, I, I punched a wall. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I would get... I, I, dude, I was not... I, I was in a bad place. I was in a really bad place. I didn't want to be mean to my kids. I tried my hardest not to, but when they f- something up, and I, just, I would just... I would be like, what the... F-? Like, I, I, I'll, I forget this. I, I came home one day... <laughs> And I had gotten a pizza at the pizza place and I'm trying to get in. And my kids are just looking at me through the window, like through the sliding <laughs> glass door. And I got all this shit in my hand. I'm carrying this pizza and the pizza comes flying out of my hand and it lands on the ground. And I, the box opens and the pizza starts to slide out. And I'm just pissed. I walk in, I open up the door. I go, you guys can't even open the door. You guys can't help me with anything. You could just stand there and look at me. What the f- and I'm so pissed. And I take that pizza, I pick it up off the ground, and I throw it. Now it wasn't, it was barely, it barely touched the ground, but I threw it on the table and I go, Well, good. Tonight you're having patio f- pizza. That's what we have for dinner tonight. <laughs> patio pizza. That's funny. How annoying was the, the lady that had to observe them? Now that's what I wanted. It was annoying, but it was annoying because she had no personality. Was that was she, part of Was it. she supposed to have a personality though? I would imagine some do. But I, I think for dramatic purposes, that added to what you hated about the moment. Because for him to have to pretend, like he was pretending with his son a little bit, especially when he was doing the homework, so yeah. he was getting frustrated. And he wanted to talk to his son in a way that wouldn't have been verbally abusive, but it would have been more natural than what he was doing had she not been there. Right. And I would have hated to have to pretend. Well, that would have drove me nuts. I used to do this joke about having a uh, uh, CPS come over to my house. I had a CPS person come over to my house mm. to watch me interact with my kids because Max said, uh, I, I, <laughs> I was going through his room and I was, I did yell. I was no doubt about it. I was yelling at him because I went up to the room and I found like food in their room, like food, like instead of taking it downstairs and throwing it away, like they like would just put it in the closet or hid it under the bed. Like plates and yeah. And I was, I was, I was like, I didn't, wasn't raised that way. Right. They're not going to be raised that way. Right. And now I'm pissed because this is just straight up laziness. This right. is just, you're so lazy. You can't take a dish downstairs. And as a matter of fact, you should never get to take a dish to your room ever again. You know, I was, I was pissed <laughs> and I was going through the, and I said, you guys got to clean this up. And I came back up to clean up. And I, I say this in the joke, I came up to clean up the room and the room looked good. And I was like, all right, man, they're listening to me. I'm they fucking, put everything in the you, closet. They put everything in the <laughs> closet i opened up the closet and shit just started falling around me. and i started grabbing that shit i'm throwing i go you don't need this anymore i'm starting to throw shit at, making piles we're getting this to get rid of pile right. this is the put it away pile right. this is the and i'm throwing and i find this uh, uh um there was snorkeling equipment in Arizona. in Arizona. what are you snorkeling in the pool i took that snorkeling and it was an old snorkeling equipment so it had this heavy glass right. mass and i threw it like that and it was supposed to just go on to the other side of the wall but it didn't it like because it was in a bag, it kind of flew up a little bit, right. and it just went straight for the window, and it went straight out the window. Was the window open? No. The oh, window, it broke the window. It, it opened. Oh, the window wow. was open when it went through it. Wow. I'm pissed, and I get, but I hit that point of being pissed. And as a parent, I think parents get to this point, and and this is a, this is the saving grace when you get to that point where you're so pissed that you went over anger, you went right into like shutdown mode, and I go. Uh-uh, I don't even need to talk to you guys. Get this place cleaned up. I got to fuck fix a window now. <laughs> and 
uh, I guess Max went to school and he was telling his friend about what happened and the teacher overheard. Right. And Max played a lot of basketball at the time. So he had he would get bruises like on his arms and right. his legs. And he he was he was a small kid, but he played basketball. He played hard. He's he was right. pretty he's a pretty good basketball player. And uh, so he had some bruises. So he, the teacher overheard it. So the teacher called the principal. The principal called the nurse. The nurse called Max. And Max came in and they, they talked to Max. And he said, no, my dad never hit me or anything like that. He was just mad because this happened. And the window broke. And, and they looked at me. He had these bruises. So they said they had to call CPS. So they called <clears> CPS. So I had this lady come over to my house. Honestly, she comes over to my house. And she walks in. Sweet lady. Very nice. And I was pissed though. I said to my kids, I, I was so pissed. I go, this, this is what happened. And I, I, I said, this, this, I'm going to have a lady come over to my house and judge me on how I'm raising you fucker kids. Mm. And I said, you know what? What you go live with your mom. How about you live with your mom? hundred percent of the time. Don't live here because I don't need somebody coming over here to do this. You don't, you want to, you want to around like this where you're going to make my life miserable. <laughs> go live with your mom. And I didn't want them to go live with their mom. And so, you know, they said, no, that's not what we want. So they're, they're over at the house. And I said, okay, I made this appointment. The lady comes over. And uh, she she goes away. She goes, okay. We all sit down. She goes, okay, I'm going to go talk to your kids. She goes up to the room. She comes back. It was quick, man. She comes back. She goes, listen, I talked to your boys. And, uh, you know, we all go through some We all have our bad days. And I can tell your boys love you and that you take care of them. And this isn't, this isn't you know, th- these things happen. You know, uh, but I can see what the house is. I can see how you are. I can see who they are. We're, we're, we're going to let, I'm closing this case. And so that, that was basically it. It's a joke that I wrote about the, the phone book. Like they used to give us these phone books. Mm-hmm. People always wondered why, what, you know, why, what would you do with phone books? You know, and I said, uh, so she was walking out of the house and just as she walked out the door, she stopped and she looked at me. She goes, hey, is there any, is there any other questions you have for me? I go, yeah. I go, if I did want to beat my kids though, and I didn't want them to see it. <laughs> How would I do that? She goes, oh, you use a phone book. And so that was the whole, that was the tie into this right. joke. But I, I, obviously I didn't say that to her because that would have turned into a whole other thing. Right. But yeah, that, that situation, I felt it with that lady because of that. Yeah. I, I, that, that, that annoyed the shit out of me. And her bland, no personality uh, really took it over the top. Uh, you know, I almost fainted when the cut arm part happened. They cut on part. I don't even understand that, but that's because he's nervous and he's trying to like, why would he even t- yeah, explain why would he that? Do that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, only other thing I really have, uh, and, and this is okay, here we go. Uh, and you don't have to, you know what I was going to tell you? Uh, I'm a, I'm a fly you to, uh, Omaha. So we could do the email episode there. Okay. Uh, I don't no, uh, I don't know if this is a white thing. I, I want to. I want to say it is, even though I know it probably isn't. This thing, where when the the the, the boyfriend and or the husband and the wife, or if it's boyfriend girlfriend, break up, and she gets a significant other, maybe you get a significant other, but y'all hang out. Like remember when he went over to the house? She got a new boyfriend. He, he's playing with his son with the guns. And he sees her and they give each other a kiss. When I'm done with you, I'm done with you. I can't, and I'll use the word immature. I'm not mature enough to be your friend if we've been together in love, had and watch you kiss another dude and we hang out. I can't do that. And I and I want to say, it feels like a white thing. I don't know if it's a white thing or not, and I can't get I can't get there. What I will say is this: um, I feel this is just the way that I feel about it. If I'm not going to be with my, this is how I felt with my my ex. If I'm not going to be with you, and you're going to be with someone else, I want it to be someone that the kids like. And if that happens, I'm going to go out of my way to make sure that dude stays there because there's a lot of fucked up people in the world. And I don't know people like you don't know this other person that this person is going to bring into this world. And if it's someone that I want to be there because I feel I, I trust my kids around them and they're happy when they're around him, I don't want that person there. So I would go out I of my way. I understand that for the safety. I would go out of my way to make that. I didn't have that with my ex. So you're saying you would hang out with them if it meant 
Your kids being comfortable? If my kids are comfortable and the person's an, a good, like if I see that person, I go, that's a good person. And I, I obviously, obviously they still cared about each other. You know, that was the point of the movie at the end that they still were caring about each other. And it, it, if he, she's happy and he's happy and my kids are happy. Yeah. I want to do, I want to make sure that this is a happy broken family. Cause I want that person in the life because I, I don't want to a person in the life. I, I get that part, but are you hanging out? I don't think I'm hanging out. Like, like y'all. But if they go- called me up and said, "Hey, do you want to come over?" So we're we're going out to dinner. My mom was going to watch the kids. Can you come over and watch the kids? Or no, 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 no. I'm talking about. Hey, we're going to some. Event. I'm not going on vacation with them. Okay, not even vacation because that's that's like a commitment. But if they went, hey, there's a play in town. Why don't you come with us to the play or to a movie or to the park? Probably not. Yeah, I can't do that, yo. But I, I, I want it. Like, if, 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 if that was going to help the, in the beginning, if that helps that relationship, and I like the person, maybe I would do that because I want my kids to be in a safe place with people that I trust. And I, honestly, because I did, I, I, I'm suspect of her judgment. Mm-hmm. I might want to meet that person. I might want to go to dinner with them. I might want to see what this person is about. Uh, but I didn't have to do that because the person that I'm talking about that she was with, I just knew was st- straight up ass. And it turned out he was. And he, yeah, he was, it was a problem. But he, uh, he was never around my kids. I kept, my kids were with me. Uh, and he didn't like, he didn't really care for true. And I was able to get True to come live with me too, and right. I didn't have that problem. I didn't have to worry about that problem. Right. Uh, but he wasn't. A, he wasn't a mean guy. He just wasn't nice. He just. He wasn't loving to my kids. Man, if you're gonna be around my kids, you better love them. Yeah, I totally get that part. I. I just. I just. For me, just going. We all hanging out at a baseball game, and I'm sitting where I could see he got his arm around her. Maybe there's a little, you know, PDA. And sweet words being whispered. Even though I know she's not mine no more, she was mine. She had my heart. I can't watch another man, even if she's not with me anymore, make her feel the way I made her feel and see those emotions and that exchange of uh, love. No. And I, 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 no, I that, can't handle that. No, that, that's not the problem for me. That's not because my, my, my stepdad, my stepdad made me a different person. This is this is what my, my stepdad and I, I, I we didn't have a, a great relationship. He had, um, he was just a different kind of cat, man. And we didn't we we were we were a little oil and, and water kind of in, in a lot of different situations. But I had really, I, I have a lot more respect for him as I got older and got into my own situations. But one thing he did for me is that I didn't see my dad for years uh, until I was well, I was eleven. But when you're eleven. That's a long time. When you're a young kid, you don't see someone from the time you're like four to 11. That's a long time. Um, I didn't see him. And my, and my, it, it kept, it came up around when I was 11 years old. And my dad said to my mom, you should call him. And you should, and you should get to see who his dad is and see what this is about. And my dad, my dad, my stepdad, but I call him my dad. He, he invited him over for dinner and he came over for dinner. And they talked, and uh, I was impressed with him. He welcomed him into the house, not for him, and not for my mom, but for me. And so that's why I said it's about my kids. That's why I, I could do that, because I saw this man, and my, my stepdad wasn't a, a very warm, welcoming. He was a very man, very mm-hmm. macho kind of guy. But he, for, for me, he put that aside and brought him into the house so that you can see him. Now there was there was moments where there was irritation, not between my stepdad and me because of my dad. And because like I would go do something with him. And there, you know, there was just there's little things that cause in the family, especially that my my other my brother and sister. Um they're my brother and sister, but technically they're my half brother and sister because it was a different dad. But uh, you know, they would get jealous because I was gonna go with my my uh my dad. And they were going to be at home with their dad. And they were go, we wish we had two dads. And I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> you only wish you had two dads because you don't. And you think I'm, this is fun. I, I mean, I'm enjoying getting to go see my dad, but I would rather have one dad. I'd rather have the same dad as you. Right. But my, but he was such a man. I, and, I, and I'll say it this way. He was such a man that he was able to put away his feelings, invite 
my dad over to the house so that I could have a relationship with him despite what he felt like. Cause I know that can't be comfortable to go. Yeah. Bring him in. You raised me for all these years. He's been gone and I'm going to get excited because my, and, and there was a moment he was pissed about one thing I did. I remember I, I, I did something. He was like, you only did that because your dad was coming over. I was like, no, I did it for, because it was our family. <laughs> Um, so yeah, those emotions are there, but he did put it aside. And I thought that, that was, uh, I took that with me when I went to this step in my life. Right. So I understand the idea of doing that because you want, you, you do it for the kids. You don't do it for you or you, you put yourself aside for your children. So this is where I'm asking the people again, let me know if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure I'm wrong. Cause that would be ludicrous to think that. But the reason why I allude to this a little bit is because, you know, I do this thing in, the, in my set now where I go, and again, I'm, I'm basing this off of real where I go, white dudes tend to be a little bit more loose with their women when it comes to having fun at their expense. And white dudes get freaky and wild. And dude, Ares, love you, bro. You're hilarious. Dude, my girl's a huge fan. You should. And you can't even compliment a black man respectfully to him about his woman. Hey, brother, I just want to let you know your girl's gorgeous. All right, man, thanks, but go ahead with this shit. And it gets a huge laugh. Yeah. So that's the only reason why I'm going, I don't know. I just I just feel like black men are, are a little bit more like, I don't know if protective is the right word because she's your ex. So there's nothing to protect. But I don't know. I just think certain shit we don't. I'll say this about white dudes that I have seen. And I don't know if this is just a white dude thing, but from the way you describe it, I think it would be more of a white dude thing. Why do it seem okay when their girl has been with, or like if it's someone famous, like they're okay with that. That's mm. weird to me. Right. Like, first of all, and there's this, there's this thing, uh, it's, it's a Seinfeld episode. It's one of the older ones, one that, right. where he says to Elaine, basically, uh, no, he's talking to George about Elaine because, and she's, uh, like an, a baseball player, uh, Keith Hernandez. And she goes, and he's like, oh, they seem to be getting along. And George says, and he goes, yeah, I just, just never thought she would go out with someone better than me. Mm. Like, you know, like he was more famous. Right, you know, right. He's playing, he's playing, he's not a famous, he's not supposed to be the, the famous comic in, right. in when he's doing this. So he's playing it down. He's like, I never thought though, you know, I just never thought about it, someone better than me. And, 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 and there's someone, and I've seen it in white dudes. I don't know if it's just white dudes, but where they're like, uh, oh yeah, was she so and so, or like she's been with so and so, or like right. that, that. That's that's like up their level, right? I don't want to. I don't want to open a magazine and see someone else. My girl's been. I. I that doesn't help me. That right. doesn't make me feel more secure. Yeah, I. You, I would love to know. I, and please, to the black men that listen to this podcast, tell me if I'm crazy. Tell me if I'm being racially stupid. But I. 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 I, I are you are some of y'all friends with you, with with your exes and you hang out with them and you know what I mean you can be okay with them kissing and hugging and showing you you seeing that affection I want to know cuz I can't do it I just can't do it even I, if I had a new girlfriend and it was like I got a girlfriend new girlfriend she got a new boyfriend let's all hang out I just, I can't. I think when you move on, it doesn't make a difference. And maybe that, maybe you're right. Maybe it is a white, it could be a white thing. But I just think once you move on, I don't care who she's after that. She, I, there's a reason I'm not. Her. I understand that. So I don't give who she's at that point. I guess I'm just, I'm, I'm probably, it's a mixture of immaturity and selfishness. Yeah, maybe, but I, I, I don't care. I care who's around my kids. I got you. That's what I As care As you about. should yeah. for their safety and yeah. their well-being. But to see my woman interlocked with another man's arms and his hand on her hip as they walk in, and I'm like, it used to belong to me. Yeah, but I got it way before you did, and I got it when it was younger see, and tighter. I, 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 that, them them <laughs> stats don't mean shit to yeah, me. Yeah, they do to me. They do, they do? Yeah, they do to me. I don't care. Like, if I, I got it when it was good. You got it when it was... I know some dudes will say sloppy seconds, but Leftovers. Damn, <laughs> don't eat. I don't want nobody to have my leftovers, that's my plate forever. I don't care. No, that doesn't bother me. All take right. take that away. Take uh, that away. I didn't want it anymore. I'm pretty much done. Uh, I just wanted to ask you one question. Uh, why did he keep calling his son sweetheart and honey? What kind of shit was that? He's loving. 
Nah, man, your father, you ain't supposed to call your son sweetheart or honey. That's the mom. Hun come here, honey. A, a, a man calling his boy honey? I tell my sweetheart. boys I love them all the time. No, I love you is totally different. That's, that's you got to say that. You love them because you do. But no man should call his son honey or sweetheart. Those are women's titles. When, when they were real little, I think I might have, I, I had little, I had names for them besides just their names. Like when they were toddlers, yeah, right? Yeah, That's when babies. Different. But once they start walking and talking and Dude, he, comprehending, I'm not calling my son honey. Not only that, but it, like your kids are running around outside. The last thing they want is their dad to call them honey in front of the neighborhood. Or sweetheart. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was, you know what I mean? But if it's loving, I go, I guess it's, what's the, what's the difference? No, there's a difference. Is it? Oh, yes. I love you as a given. You ain't call, what are you calling a boy honey? I, 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 it's a different world, man. We're, we're, we're raising softer kids. Yeah, I'm staying in the world I live in. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, I, this is a good movie, man. And I, and I got to tell you, the one thing that this movie had at the very end that was reminiscent to me of another movie I like, but this was a comedy, but I didn't like that ending either. The breakup. Remember at the very end when Vince Vaughn runs into Jennifer Aniston? Oh, yeah. And they have a little talk, and as they're leaving, they kind of glance back at each other. I wanted to see them. First of all, I was mad they didn't really get back together. He stood her up at the concert when she wanted so bad for them to be together. And I just went, I'm rooting for you. But this is real life. I know, but that's why I'm going, this is real life. When she That last scene, just like with the sandwich with the menu, when she sees his shoe untied, and she goes down and ties his shoe. That was like, oh, like, like I, I, I was rooting for him. And, and it just seemed like but, they're not going to get. But if they're not together, but they're always there for each other, is there a problem? With What's that? the point? It, if we, either in, I'm an all in guy. Either I'm in or I'm not. How's it, I don't working? Play how's, how's, it how's it working for you? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. But, but I'm also, like you said, I, I'm, I think I'm at that point where I'm going, I have to figure out how to love me. Yeah. I'm too busy trying to love her. And, you know, there's all these quotes I always come across. And I think one of them was, you can't buy your way into somebody's life. No matter how many Chanel bags, no matter how many Cartier. Man, I don't bought this. Three Cartier bracelets at $12,000 a pop. I bought her a $23,000 Cartier watch. She drives a $150,000 Tesla. And I'm just sitting here like, it don't matter how much money I spend. Something's not... Something is just not, you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand what you mean. I love another great quote. Uh, men have lost a lot of money chasing women. You'll never lose women chasing money. No. But you might not find the right woman either when you're just chasing money. Oh, I quote Scarface. First you get the money. Then you get the power. Once you get the power, then you get the woman. And how'd that work out for him? Well, it wasn't a woman that <laughs> shot his brains out. No, but it, it might as well have been because he, he was because of her as well you can't you can't buy that you can't buy that what you want that happiness that 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 you can't you got to find it in yourself first and then you can give that love to someone else once you have it in yourself and i love you aries where's my rolex hey man listen <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a money will get you the woman you want struggle gives you the woman you need dude I, i'd rather be with a woman that i that i struggled with that we struggle together. Hey, listen, ladies, if there's any women, based on what I just told you, I'd be buying my... Uh, <laughs> you put in your resumes. Feel free. Uh, you know what comes with Airy Spears. Jowlery. You ready for... Uh, Some dates? Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? It's crazy. I got another... You gotta go again? I got to pinch. Dude, you know what that is, don't you? What is it? White Castle. You right. You <laughs> right. You're right. If you ever plugged up, go get some White Castle. It'll undo oh. you. Okay, guys. Uh, again, we're still in St. Louis. We, we, we wrapped up a few episodes up here because uh, we're, we're on time constraints on our next gig. Uh, January 5th through the 6th, Aries is going to be at the Funny Bone in Omaha. Apparently, so, I'm going to be there, yeah, too. But we'll, yeah. see, we'll, we'll see how that works out. July 11th through the 14th, we'll be at the Improv in Irvine, California. July 18th through the 20th, we'll be at Cobb's Comedy Club in San Francisco. August uh, 1st to the 3rd, we'll be at Laugh Out Loud Comedy Club in San Diego. August 8th to the 10th, we're going to be at the Mic Drop Comedy Club in, oh, 
I fucked that up. I think I did. Did I say that? I think I did that wrong? August 1st to the 3rd, we're going to be at Laugh Out Loud in San Antonio, Texas. Sorry. August 8th through the 10th, we're going to be at Mike Drop Comedy in San Diego, California. Sorry, got those two confused. August 22nd through the 23rd, we're going to be back in Phoenix at Stand Up Live in Phoenix, Arizona, followed by a night in Tucson, Arizona, August 24th at the Rialto Theater, one night only. August 30th through September 1st, we're going to be at the Improv in Houston, Texas. September 7th, we're at the Complex, one night only in Salt Lake City, Utah. September 13th through the 14th, uh, Hartford Funny Bone. Uh, September 20th through the 21st, we're at the uh, Kansas City, uh, Missouri Improv. Uh, that's my birthday weekend. Uh, come on out. October 4th, one night only, Royal Oak Music Theater in Michigan. October 5th, uh, one night only, the Apollo Theater back in New York. One night only. Come out there, man. New York support. Uh, October 11th through the 13th, uh, we'll be at the Improv in Orlando, Florida. October 17th, one night only, the Vancouver Playhouse back in Canada just for one more night. Uh, October 18th through the 20th, we'll be at the Spokane Comedy Club in Washington. October 25th through the 27th, we're going to be at the Improv in Tampa. October 31st through November 3rd, we're at the Chicago Improv. And November 8th, one night only, Hawaii Theater in Honolulu, Hawaii. Yeah. Is that a show? I think that is a show. The big wrap up is going to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it, guys. Spears and Steinberg. Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.